these are students in our school in Painesville, Liberia. And it is only some of the students, because those are the ones who have uniforms. In total, there are 175 students. You can go to the next one. And as you can see in the middle there is Past Pastor Rutherford Sankulo and his wife. And then those are some of the teachers. Uh, and you had a great responsibility in having that school. We not only built the church there, but we added on and that's where the school is located in the addition that we put onto the church. The only problem is they don't have a bathroom, so we have to work on getting them a bathroom in the building. Uh, they have to go outside. But uh, are there any other pictures? Go ahead. Ah, there is again some of the students, and these are just the ones that have the uniforms. Uh, like I said, there's a total of 175. That's the building there that you helped build. Uh, and then there's Pastor uh, Sanko Ulo and his wife Ruth on the other side. Uh, and here again, Sacred Fire Ministry Center. It was Sacred Fire International, but they changed the Sacred Fire Ministry Center because of Faith Ministry Center. <laughs> and uh, that's, uh, they're fixing the lunch and so forth for them. Uh, and obviously the kids holding up <laughs> their lunch plates <laughs> uh, as they're about to uh, about to eat. So uh, it's it, it's and and you can see that's one of the classrooms. That's it, they're in the class. The classroom kind of serves as everything. Uh, not only the classroom but the lunch room, and so it's all kind of everything together in there. Uh, and as you can see, um, they're once again holding up the holding up the bowls uh, with food. Uh, one of the one of the things is uh, that so many uh, are without, and especially when it comes to just basic food. One of the things I know that uh, I talked to Pastor Sanculo the other night, and one of the things he was telling me, uh, well, he had told me this before too, uh, was that uh, so many times they'll get children who'll come in from what they call the bush, that means, you know, outside the city, what we would call the country. Uh, and, and they would come in and they would feed them or try to, you know, try to feed them as best they could uh, because they just didn't have anything. Uh, it wasn't a case of, you know, they didn't get an EBT card or, you know, the government check. There's no government checks or EBT cards. Uh, it's very simply, they you know, depend on, they, they have to go out and work or depend on the graciousness of others. And so uh, one of the things that uh, Pastor Sankulo does is uh, any child, uh, and it just tears at his heart, any child that comes uh, there, they do their best to try and put something on their back as far as clothes and, and put some type of food in their mouth and, and give, you know, and, 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 and feed them. Um, when we first began to talk about the school before it even started, when we first began to talk about it, you know, what he wanted to do was just, you know, every kid just come to school for free. And I said, well, brother, that you can't do that because, you know, you, you quickly, it just, it just won't work. And so we, we talked about how best it would work and uh, and so that's what they do now those who can't afford to obviously they do pay because there you pay to go to school there's no free education I think I told you that before uh, so those who can't afford to pay families that they, they pay and uh, those who can't I, I said don't just give it away I said it has to cost somebody something and so what they do is they give scholarships and uh, they have to earn the scholarship. So, uh, but the school is doing well. They've got quality teachers. Like I said, 175 students. He told me the other day, he said, everybody in the, in the in this, Painesville is about 30 miles outside of Monrovia, which is the capital city. And uh, he said, everybody is talking about what a miracle it is for the school to be up and running.
just wanted to add to that, that when I spoke with Pastor on yesterday also, that they are only able to feed the kids one day a week. And they're in school from early morning until four o'clock. They're the only school in the district that keep the kids until four o'clock because the other schools are not able to feed them every day. So, you know, we don't know how blessed we yep. are. And so I'd just like to employ you to sponsor this school because not only are they receiving a Christian education, but some of them without that one day a week of having food and beverage, we don't know what would happen to them. So one day a week, they get food, whereas the other days they may have nothing to eat for breakfast, for lunch, or for dinner. So consider your blessings. And this year, I'm just asking everyone to pray about not giving someone else a Christmas gift, but let's be a true blessing and bless somebody that is truly without, because I don't think any of us are really without anything. And so, but until that time comes Christmas, if you can get $5, $10 a week to go toward this mission, and you can just put on there for the school to be a blessing so that we can feed our kids, our students, at least every day, once a day. Can you even imagine to go every day with not having anything to eat? I can't imagine that. So this really tore their hearts, and they have sacrificed even more of what they have. They've given some of their rent money and things of that sort mm -hmm. so that these kids can eat one day a, one day a week. I just wanted to share. No, that's, that's, that's good, good to share. One last thing before I get started that he told me, he said, he said, he calls me daddy. He said, daddy, you have to come. He said, he said, it's important for you to come. He said, because I want to show you what we have done. You need to see what the Lord has accomplished. He said this, he said, you need to see what the Lord has accomplished through your hands. That's all of you guys' hands. He said, it, people are calling this a miracle. He said, and truly, Oh, it's not up there no more. He said, truly, it is a miracle. He told me, he said, you told me to leave the refugee camp in Ghana. You told me to come back home to Liberia. He said, you told me to start the church up as soon as I got there. He said, we were afraid, we were scared, we didn't know what we were going to do. He said, because you told us, we packed up and we went back to Liberia, came back home to Liberia. He said, we were afraid for our lives, but we came back. He said, you told us to find some land, build a building, and we did that. He said, and now you need to come so you can see what you have done. He said, you need to see. And that's just there. I don't get too many reports from Nigeria. But he told me, I asked my sister, well, what's going on in Nigeria? I don't get a chance to talk to Pastor Uka. I, I think I've talked to him only twice. He said, everything is flowing well there. He says, when you come, he says, Pastor Uka will be here. He says, I guarantee it. No, no, you don't have to worry about it. He will be here to see you. And he'll bring you his report personally. He said, but, and he reiterated to me what Pastor Uka said. And he says, you have many, many children in Nigeria that you don't even know about. I'm telling you, we don't think about what we do, we, we have our support, excuse me, our support Sunday, and we don't think about what it means for these folks 
when we send them that support. And we think it's a few dollars. But the truth of the matter is, it goes a long way with them. They are there and they know that they have friends here. And it helps them and encourages them. It keeps them going. He's told me on many occasions that because you guys are there, he says, we don't worry. Not about money, but we don't worry because we know, he says, all I have to do is pick up the phone. He says, now all I have to do is call daddy. And I know I'll get a word from the Lord. We don't know. I talked to Pastor Fair last night. And he told me almost the same thing. He said, it's so good to know that all I've got to do is pick up the phone and I'll get a word from the Lord. He says, you've encouraged me, Pastor. He said, anything the Lord says to you concerning me, please just call me. Give me that word from God. He says, it's good to know that somebody can call you or you can call them and the Lord will speak through them to you. He said, and you're that person. And this is just not me, it's Prophetess Donna. She probably has given them more word than I have. It's this church, this ministry. You don't know the impact you have on people. It's humbling. It's humbling because we know it's not us. It's all God. How would we have met Pastor Sankulo in a refugee camp? How, would, how, how did that connection happen except God made it happen? Most people are looking for some, you know, ministry to help some large, and, and we saw something that was almost non-existent at the time. But God knew exactly who to team up with who so that His will would be done. His will. So I encourage you, as Sister Donna said, that when we come to support uh, our Support Sunday, really, let's pray. Find out what God would have us to do. We're, we're, we're right now, her and I are praying about just, you know, we, we, we have a, a multitude of ministries we try and give to, and we're praying, Lord, you know, okay, do we do, we do more here, more than that one? Do we, you know, trim this one back? And, and you know, we're praying to see how, how God would have us to do it because we just want to take what, what God gives and, and use it to have the greatest impact, to, to do the greatest good, to be the, the biggest blessing that we can. And so we want to make sure that we're pouring the finances into the right places and, and put them in the right hands so that God will get the glory. So pray with us in that respect, if you would, please. We appreciate it so much. Uh, and, and know that, you know, what you do has great impact. You, you've changed, uh, those children you see on that screen, you've changed their lives because of your giving. You've changed their lives. It's God, obviously, but he's working through you to change their lives. Those 175 children would not, many of them, not saying all of them, but many of them would never know Jesus, would never be able to receive an education, would never be able to move beyond where they are, except God gave us a vision, and we're fulfilling it. Amen? Amen. Well, thank you. I appreciate you receiving that. And we want to go ahead and dismiss for our uh, children's church at this time. And then um, we'll have a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads. Father, in Jesus' name, we're ever so grateful and thankful 
As Sister Donna said, we don't know how blessed we are. We sit about complaining and, and crying about what we don't have, and yet we have more than most people on the planet. We eat every day. We, we have indoor facilities, running water. We have, we have things that we take for granted that, that, that most people in the world don't even, don't even have and, and, and wish they could take for granted. Father, help us to see beyond our own selves. See with your eyes. Help us to be the blessing that you've called us to be. We're not here for no, nothing. We're not here for no good reason. We're here for a reason so that we could turn around and, and, and bless those who don't have. And we can be that arm of blessing, your arm of blessing, so with it, when they see that blessing come, they don't say, oh, you guys are great. They say, oh, God is great. God is good and God is great because it is only through you that you've enabled us to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, the Heavenly Father, receive, uh, let this word be received. Let it be a blessing to each and every single one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.